What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and when it comes to working in Revit uh, 3D views and perspective views are probably the most interesting part uh, when it comes to visualizing what have you created, the, the new interesting building that you modeled and then you create a perspective view and everything looks amazing and then you can admire your project. So uh, in this tutorial I thought it would be a good idea to cover the topic when it comes to camera setup in Revit. Uh, it, isn't as simple as it looks like a couple of clicks and there you go you have a camera well it's a bit more complicated than that and i thought uh, it might be a good idea to share with you all of the, the settings tips and tricks along the way how can you create the perfect camera view and uh, what is there to know when it comes to these camera views they are uh, quite a bit more complicated than one might think so that's what i'm going to be covering in today's uh, tutorial now before we get started i would just like to ask you to subscribe to my channel i make useful revit tutorials each week i make multiple tutorials and then also if you're interested in maybe some uh, more advanced courses, more advanced approach, uh, check out my website balkanarctic.com. The link is going to be just below the video in the description. Uh, there you can find all of my advanced courses. I've got, well, beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced courses. I've got over 60 hours of content, so make sure to check it out. I think it's really useful. Also, the second link in the description takes you to my Patreon page. There you can find all of my Revit project files. Uh, like this uh, building that we're going to be using for this demonstration. Uh, I've got over 400 files there so far, so check it out if you're interested. And then also uh, there I have some of my advanced courses as well. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So this is the project that I'm going to be using for this demonstration. This is the office building project. And if you would like to check out the uh, complete 15-hour uh, course in which I show you how to model this building in detail, uh, check out my website, first link in the description. Uh, you can get that course as well as the kind of the project files for that. Okay, now let's go to the ground level. And this is where you're going to be placing the, the camera. So uh, for a camera place, you want to go in a floor plan view and then once you're in the floor plan view we have to access the camera tool so to access the camera tool uh, we can go here to the quick access toolbar and there we have the default 3d view but if we open up the drop menu there we have the camera option now this is probably the quickest uh, option to get to the camera additionally you can go here to the view tab and then there we have the 3d view but again we have to kind of expand that menu and get to the camera now, once I click on the camera, uh, now we can place it. So as you can see now, uh, next to our cursor or exactly on our cursor, we have the camera. And basically where you click first, that's going to be the position of, uh, of well, the camera or you as the person looking at the building. So basically the first click is going to be uh, where the camera is placed. So let's say that, that the view is going to be maybe for some from someone walking here, uh, uh, just by the road and that that's where we're going to make the first click and then you're going to see that we as we extend we get these three lines we get the line in the middle which is kind of the, the center line and then we have two lines on si on the sides now what this is the the second click where we have to click uh, basically uh, lets us uh, select what is going to be the target or the direction in which the camera is going to be looking so uh, what I like to do is go all the way past the building that way I can make sure that, as you can see, those side lines, uh, the, they show that the uh, building is going to be in view with the current camera setup. So I just like to go a little bit past the building and then click again, and that's going to place that target. Okay, so once we have done that, uh, Revit is immediately going to open up that 3D view. And if I go here to the project browser, scroll down a little bit, you can see that under 3D views, we have the 3D view one. That's uh, usually how it's going to name new 3D views. So let's just right click here and go into rename and let's call this one our new 3D view. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, it has renamed that view. Uh, now, when it comes to setting this view up, if we go back to the ground level, you're going to notice that our camera and the target are, well, gone. Now, you can see those again if you go back here to the new 3D view and you click on the frame or the outline or the crop line 
of this view. So if you select this, it's going to highlight, you get these little dots, and we're going to be talking about them a little bit later on. But if we go back to the ground level, you can see that the camera, the target, which is this over here, and then these lines that show kind of what is going to be kind of in view. So for example, here, we can see it's touching a little bit of this car. And if we go back here, as you can see, there we go, we have that little kind of half of the car showing. Uh, so basically, this allows us to select that target and drag it around if necessary. Or we can select the camera and move that around if necessary. And also we have this little drag button here. So what this const uh, controls is how far out you see. So for example, if I were to drag this over just like this, and then go back to the 3D view, as you can see, the building is kind of going to be ghosted out after this point. So that bas basically determines how far out you can see uh, with this uh, current uh, camera setup. So basically that's uh, those are the three kind of ways that we can uh, play around with the settings for the camera here in the floor plan view. Uh, now, before we continue explaining uh, all of the camera settings, one thing that I think it's important to mention at this point is that this that we create with the camera, so when we go here and choose the camera, uh, that basically means that we're creating a perspective view. So if you go here to the view properties and scroll down a little bit, you're going to notice that under camera, uh, here for the projection mode, it's going to be set to perspective. Now, if I open up uh, the drop menu, it's going to give us the option to make it orthographic as well. Now, what basically what that orthographic view means, uh, that is the default 3D view. So that's what happens when you click here on this button. So that's this view that you have over here. If I now go here to the view properties, scroll down to camera, it's going to say orthographic. Uh, now, what you can do is convert from an uh, orthographic to perspective and also from perspective to orthographic. Now, when you go from uh, just from regular perspective to orthographic, that's not that big of a problem. You have that option. Uh, now, what they do not recommend uh, is going from orthographic into perspective. And the reason for that is because you've seen the uh, kind of the, the, the detail that goes into placement of the camera and of the target. And if you just create a default 3D view that's in orthographic projection mode, and you just flip that into perspective, well, Revit is going to kind of freak out for a second. And then if you can zoom out a little bit, just to see what, what's going on. Revit is kind of arbitrarily going to try to position the camera as well as the target. Uh, so now if I go here and uh, in order to select the camera view, we have to make sure to add crop view as well as crop region visible. So that's going to give us this view. And now if I select it and go into camera, uh, ground level, it's going to look like this. So this is basically what that camera placement looks like. So uh, let me just go back a few steps. So uh, that's the that's like the the main reason. Okay, did we flip it back? Yeah, it's back. Let's see. I don't want to go too far back. Perfect. Okay, so uh, that that's why you don't want to do that. You want to go, if you're creating a perspective view, you want to use the camera tool. So there we go, that's important. Okay, let's go back to our 3D view. And now uh, let's talk about all of the settings that we have here in the properties uh, panel. So here first we have the graphics and there we can set up the detail level, uh, parts visibility, visibility graphics and overrides, and uh, so on. Uh, so basically, these are all of the basic settings for views. So I'm just going to move uh, down. Then we have the extents. Now this is really important for the kind of the, the camera view settings. So the crop view and the crop region visible are both referring to this, uh, basically the frame of that uh, camera view. One really important thing that I would like to also talk about before we finish, and that is the focal length. That's going to change the whole feel of your camera view. So what that basically means is how far uh, or how close to the model the camera is, or how far away from the model the camera is, and that is going to change the way that the building looks. Uh, so that can be controlled uh, in a couple of different ways. So let me show you. Uh, the first way is to go here to the uh, basically just to the full navigation wheel. You right click on the full navigation wheel and here we have the increase decrease focal length. So you click that and you get this little 
button that looks like this and basically it zooms in and zooms out away from the model. Now this isn't the actual zoom tool, this is the focal length tool. So uh, keep in mind that there is a difference if I hit the escape key. We do have the zoom here but the zoom looks uh, a bit different. So let's kind of rewind before the zoom. Okay. Uh, so that is the focal length. Now when do you use the focal length? Well, uh, you can select the camera, go to the ground level, and then you can you know, go all the way back away from the building, just like that. Then you can go back to the camera view, it's going to look like this. And then you can go here, right click, let's see, okay, increase, decrease focal length, and then you can kind of zoom into the building and you're going to have some proportion of the building that looks like this. Uh, now let's hit the escape key a couple of times, let's select that frame again, uh, go here to the ground level, now let's bring the camera all the way close in like this, almost like in front of the building. Uh, let's now go here to the 3D view, and at this point what you want to do is right click, increase, decrease focal length, and then you can zoom out like that, and there we go. Now we can of course extend this and as you can see this looks way different than the previous one. So you can play around with that. Uh, it's uh, kind of like using different lenses for your camera. Uh, for example the lens that I, I, I use uh, for filming these intros is a 24 millimeter lens. You can have a 50 millimeter lens that's like one of the most common ones and then also you have uh, like really far lenses for uh, taking photographs or filming from really far away like 200 millimeter or even more. Uh, so that can be controlled by that increase decrease focal length distance and that's going to change the whole feel of your uh, of your view. Okay so that's pretty much it for uh, this tutorial. I hope you have learned uh, a lot of uh, new things and if you like the way that I explained this, if you like the kind of in-depth approach, uh, you can check out my website balkanarctic.com. There I have have numerous websites or, or numerous courses over 60 hours of content where I can tackle uh, beginner, intermediate and advanced subjects when it comes to uh, working in Revit. So check it out if you're interested. There you can also find uh, my this course for this office building, uh, my custom Balkan Architect Revit template, both uh, metric and imperial versions and also check out my Patreon. That's going to be the second link in the description. There you can find all of my Revit project files as well as some of my advanced courses. So check it out if you're interested. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video, and I'll be back in a couple of days with another Balkan Architect tutorial. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.